There was a patient transferred to our hospital who had been cared for at another hospital, and he had, um, and the report we got was that he had end-stage, end-stage cancer, mm -hmm. prostate cancer. I think wasn't that there was no more therapy no more curative treatment than that he was essentially coming back for palliative care. I wanted to make sure that I communicated information in the right way for this family. So I actually asked the eldest son to come out with me, or he stepped out with me, and I said to him, I asked him how much his father knew, and he said, really, my father doesn't, uh, doesn't know anything about what's going on. Mm. So they, would, they didn't talk to him about that at all. We probably need to have some kind of conversation, and you can help me talk about the best way to do this for him so that he knows how to prepare mm -hmm. uh, for what's coming. And he said, oh, well, he's already doing that. In fact, right now he's talking about what to do with his things. He's mm -hmm. giving his sheep to one family member and his truck to another. And I realized he, um, this is about indirect communication. It's honest communication, mm -hmm. but it's indirect communication. So he knew without it having to be said what was going on. What was important is that the important things were happening. We just needed to um, understand, to listen, listen, and to follow yeah. that communication. Bruce, you've seen mm -hmm. different models that people are trying to develop mm -hmm. to meet individual culture needs. There's mm -hmm. not one Indian culture. You know, Lakota right. yeah, is going right. to be different than Navajo, is going to be different than my, uh, my tribe of Choctaw. Mm -hmm. so, to be able to communicate and have cultural mm -hmm. brokers mm -hmm. who help you understand what those imperatives are within the, the culture I'm glad can you do it right. It because right. even here on Navajo, it's going to be different. Yeah. Right. It's not one size fits all, that, mm -mm. Um, but there is a skill set that we all need to have, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. ha need to have an, a, a comfort level with addressing the yeah. issues. But if what we're really trying to do uh, in our clumsy way mm -hmm is say to a, a person, an, an elder or an elder in their family, or a person with their family, we really want to take good care of you. We need to know what we need mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. to take good care of you. And I know I'm going to say this the wrong way. Forgive me, mm -hmm. but, but here's, what, here's what we need to know. Mm -hmm. They can tell very quickly where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. and, and you can say things that if a Navajo said it to them, they would be entirely uh, offended, mm -hmm. but they understand that that uh, we also don't necessarily know the culture, but they they care very deeply about whether or not we care. People always talk about is when they say taboo, often is their their lack of education. Mm -hmm. We're finding a lot of the elderly. It's okay to talk about because it's my condition. <clears throat> I need to know. I need to know about mm -hmm. this so that I know what to do next. I have found over the 25 years that I've been out here on mm -hmm. the reservation that a lot of the truisms mm -hmm. that you hear, well, you don't do this, you don't do that, that's a taboo, you don't do this. Well, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. there's some truth to that, but you never know with the individual that you have in mm -hmm. front of you that you're talking how they feel about any of these things. Yeah. And the only way you can find out is to ask them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have never had a problem uh, in a conversation mm -hmm. when I've asked them to explain to me what their feelings are mm -hmm. on this. I've never gotten the sense that they were offended mm -hmm. and I've asked pa patients later, you know, did that offend you? Mm -hmm. Now occasionally there may be some uh, non-traditional family mm -hmm. members, that I found this in, in, uh, to be particularly true, that, that aren't perhaps as versed in the more mm -hmm. traditional ways that they immediately say, oh that's taboo. They really aren't educated mm -hmm. in, in their own culture. Yeah. Palliative care um, represents a model of patient-centered, person-centered care mm -hmm. that is really what we want to be able to provide in mm -hmm. all, a whole range of care. Mm -hmm. But palliative care, it all comes together. Together, uh -huh. yeah. Even though it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it can be difficult to provide mm -hmm. this kind of care, it can be difficult to figure out how to cross the communication barriers and how to pull everyone mm -hmm. together into the team. Um, there's a, there's a knowledge-based that, need, that folks need to have a handle on. Mm -hmm. All of those are not excuses, mm -hmm. right. and, they're ha and we can't take a buy on this. Mm -hmm. We can't right. say, it's too hard, we can't, we can't mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's it's the standard of care, right. and we have to be creative. We have to use the resources that we have to the best mm -hmm. of our ability, mm -hmm. and where possible, identify new resources, mm -hmm. and then build. 
And the whole center is the patient making a decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. Patients saying, I want to be cared this way. I want to be cared at home, not in a hospital. I would prefer to die at home, not in a hospital. There are so many things that we can offer patients for symptom management. And as you say, making the most of each day with mm -hmm. the emphasis on living and doing the right thing for the patient mm -hmm. to help them feel as well as possible. Uh, and many of the cultural concepts from traditional Indian mm -hmm. medicine with utilizing all the spiritual mm -hmm. gifts and all the support systems that are there uh, within the, the community from traditional healers mm -hmm. to social workers to uh, regular mm -hmm. uh, ministers within the community. All the strengths that are there in the community to help the patient can be brought together mm -hmm. into the team approach. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we ha we're doing the walk the talk now mm -hmm. at Fort mm -hmm. to make sure that it works, you know? And how it works is talking to one another as a team, interdisciplinary team. The most acculturated will prefer to die in the hospital. But the most traditional will say, you know, let me die at home. Mm -hmm. But you know, that whole concept about decision making, giving them the right to make a decision for themselves and how they want to die, that's like the, taking the traditional concept, that's how it was before. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, revisiting the old philosophy, the right. values, the morals that they had right. before, that we're reintegrating that back into right. this approach of, you know, care. That's right. It is actually more traditional because mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. separate uh, into treating disease, treating the body instead of treating mm -hmm. the whole person, the spiritual, the emotional, mm -hmm. the social context. It, it covers all of it. Mm -hmm. The part that you begin to uh, value is that you're helping the individual as they define to die the way they want to. Mm -hmm. You're giving them that right and you're giving them that choice, mm -hmm. and you're supporting respect. that, and the total respect about their decision. We talk a lot about respect for elders, and, and mm -hmm. that's a fundamental mm -hmm. aspect of respect, is sort of knowing that we're honoring their wishes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a key piece. And respect for culture. And respect yeah. for culture. And that's that right. it may not be the choices you would make, but it's important mm -hmm. that it meet mm -hmm. what the patient's goals are. Mm -hmm. That's right. The EPIC O for, Indian, for the Indian health system mm -hmm, is an opportunity mm -hmm. to address the unique cultural aspects of palliative care in Indian country. And that's why the cultural curriculum was so, specific, was so important. I really felt that it was essential because what we're talking about is trying to improve overall care of patients at the end of life. And if you don't include the cultural components, you're not doing right by the patient as a family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one thing I think that with the, uh, the EPIC O uh, curriculum, uh, it, it's very adaptable. And I think that as we go forward with this in the IHS, a lot of those slides are going to be, uh, they're not going to look exactly the way they do right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We know that for program development, it's going to be driven mm -hmm. by the local culture mm -hmm. and the local needs. Hopefully, the EPIC O for Indian Health curriculum can be adapted over time, mm -hmm. too, to the local needs. And ideally, it would change. It would be different when it's presented in, on Navajo than yeah. when it's presented in, uh, in, the, you know, in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. It might it look a little bit different depending on yeah. what the, the and community the reason that you train people from all the areas is to have them, one, look at sort of a core mm -hmm. curriculum and then to be able to say, these are things that really would make sense mm -hmm. for us and especially to be able to offer to patients and families the concept that it's not that there's nothing more we can do. Mm -hmm. It's Never, that there are right, lots of right. things that we can do to help you through this experience. I was taking care of this 76-year-old gentleman who had uh, end-stage esophageal cancer. He had a dis distal esophageal lesion, and he had a peg uh, tube that had been placed. And uh, he was doing pretty well at home. He was fairly independent, but he was losing a lot of weight. and he wound up being put in the nursing home for the winter, which often happens. I mean, uh, a lot of people, as I said, they live in, in houses with no running water and electricity, mm -hmm. and so he went to the nursing home. So I got to know him quite well. He spoke almost no English at all, mm -hmm. and um, he was losing a lot of weight. Uh, I met a family member who had come up from Phoenix to visit him, and, and uh, I used that opportunity to sit down and ask both of them 
what their understanding was of, of his condition and where things are potentially going. He and I had talked a couple of times, and he understood that this was going to be the end, you know, that this, he was going to die from this. But, you know, he didn't dwell on it. He, mm -hmm. he was actually quite active in the nursing home. With the granddaughter there, I said, yeah. ask Joe, what are the things that he wants to get done in the time that he has left? Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking more in terms of are there family members that he wants to meet or, you know, should we have a, like a family gathering, et cetera? Mm -hmm. And uh, so she talked to Joe in Navajo, and, uh, and she said that he says he wants to go see Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. And I almost fell off my chair. I mean, this is a very traditional man. Mm -hmm. He had herded sheep all his life. Uh, and I said, well, explain that to me. He said, no, he wants to go see Mickey Mouse. He said that he sees it on TV and the children talk about it. And he, he says he wants to go see Mickey Mouse. And I said, so, so you would like him to go to California to Disney World? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And uh, so I said, well, I think that we might be able to work this out. So your family get together uh, with your extended family, and you can also tell them this is something you can do for Joe, and you, you set up the date and the time that you're going to be going, and I will work to make sure that Joe is going to survive this trip. And uh, it all worked out, and I have his picture next to my desk at Disneyland. With Mickey. <laughs> well, it, it, Mickey's actually not in this particular picture because <laughs> there were so many family members there that Mickey didn't fit. <laughs> but he absolutely met Mickey, shook hands, hugged Minnie, in a million years, I never would have, I never would have, have uh, guessed this. If you didn't but ask. But if I didn't ask. ask. And, uh, and it never would have happened if I hadn't asked. Mm -hmm. So, and this is not the only time that something like that has happened. I mean, that really taught me, just ask. Don't go mm -hmm. in with any assumptions because you never know. Mm -hmm.